Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in today's video, we are gonna be putting together a flower hook kit that we sell over our website, blacksmithingblinks.com. That'll be linked up in the description down below. So be sure to go check that out if you have interest in putting together this blank set or any of the blanks that we offer over our website, including tooling now, as we are now offering guillotine tool kits as well over there. So be sure to check that out. So in the kit, we got a flower stem that is a nice stemmed type hook with two leaves already on it and a place to attach the flower bloom. You'll also get a flower bloom itself and a quarter inch rivet to take and put everything together. So these are a great option for Mother's Days, anniversaries, Valentine's Day, um, just gifts in general for people who have floral themes in their homes. These are, this will be a great option for them. And also you can take it around and sell it at shows and all that jazz. So without further ado, we're gonna go get started now and I'll show you how we put this together. Okay, so before you begin, you're gonna need a few things, some few simple tools uh, to help this process go along fairly smoothly, uh, you know, to get started here. Uh, you wanna have these laid out in advance, it'll help things go quicker. So one of the tools that I recommend is to have a countersink uh, in order to countersink the backside where the rivet can be peened down into. That way, when it goes on the wall, it doesn't have a tendency to rock on the wall uh, when you go to try to put your uh, you know, your screws in to actually mount the thing to the wall. So a countersink will help with that. Obviously you're gonna need a quarter inch drill bit. If this is a quarter inch rivet, which it is, this is a quarter inch by half inch long rivet and you'll need a quarter inch drill bit. You will also need, uh, it's my suggestion for a small, a slitting chisel, if you will. We're gonna use that to add some details to our flower. And then you'll also want to have a cold chisel. Now, you can actually get by without the slitting chisel if you don't have that. And if all you have is a cold chisel in your arsenal, you want a nice cold chisel. Now, this doesn't need to be sharp. It can be slightly blunted, and that's perfectly okay. Again, we're going to use that for the actual uh, veins and things like that. Uh, the next thing that you'll probably want, let me grab it here, is a good pair of tongs that can hold a small hook. So these can just be regular flat jaw tongs. They don't have to be anything special, bar stock or nothing like that. But you just want a pair of tongs to be able to hold the work as you, as you actually work out the hook. So the very first step of this whole process is we're actually going to draw out the hook some right through here. We're gonna thin this down and then we can flip it over then, grip it in the tongs this way and we'll work on the details of the rest of the stem. So let's go ahead and put this in the fire Get it nice and hot and be right back with you. Since this is 10 gauge mild steel, it doesn't take long for it to heat up. If you don't know what 10 gauge is, it's roughly eighth of an inch. So we're just gonna forge this down, thinning it out ever so slightly. And we're gonna work on that very end, trying to narrow that right down into a nice tip. Now you can stretch this out as thin and as narrow as you would like. That's totally up to you. But I'm gonna just take it out a little bit and just until I get a nice even taper all the way down. That's all I'm looking for is one nice even symmetrical taper all the way down and that's gonna be good enough for me. Just like so. Okay, to work on the leaves, you don't need the thing scalding hot. It can be actually a lot cooler than that. And we're going to go ahead and leave it at a nice bright orange temperature to a bright red. And we're going to use our little slitting chisel here to take and add a line down the leaf to give the impression of a crease. Now you can give these a lot of shape if you care to. Uh, you can actually make them pop off the wall. Just make sure that they don't dig back into the wall if you're doing that. I come all the way down to the base of them with the slitting chisel without going too far. So now I'll go ahead and show that off. For this step, I'm going to use a narrow cross peen, a really small cross peen hammer, and I'm gonna add my texture to the edges of the leaf Go over to the next area. 
I'm not hitting the anvil. I'm just aiming at the edge of the leaf. And hopefully you all can see how that's come out there. So I wanna do the same to the other side now. And there's still enough heat in here, even at a black heat, that you can get a good textured result. just like that we've got some nice leaves going all right we're gonna roll the end of it away from our top side that we've got textured and put a nice little curly cue nice little rat's tail as they call it in the trade on there and then we're gonna go over the broader portion of the horn and we're gonna go ahead and bend that right on around into something that looks pleasing to us Make sure it's all nice and in line. And that looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and brush her down. I like brushing. For all you beginners out there, you new guys to the trade, there's no benefit in brushing while the piece is still glowing yellow or orange hot unless there's something from the fire that's stuck onto the piece. The reason for this being is that you're at a high scaling heat. Get this adjusted. And it, as you sit at that higher scaling heat, it's not gonna matter. It's all how much you brush, you're always gonna produce scale. So I brush at the end of a heat and that gives me a nice sheening kind of finish. So there you go. So we've got that portion, basically the hook built at this point. The next step of this whole process, and we may have to flatten some things or adjust some things as we go here. The next step, now we'll work on the bloom. Okie doke, using the same little small cross peen that I like to keep for texturing, I'm gonna go ahead and texture these petals of this bloom. I'm gonna be using slightly overlapping hammer blows to do so and to spread out this petal nice, just like it's supposed to, working up into the center of the bloom but without going over center. Okay, so now we have the texture where we want it. So now I'm gonna leave it on the anvil while it's at this nice heat. We'll get rid of the little hammer. And we know that this is now faded into a bit of a black heat, which is good. We want that. Now we're gonna segregate out the actual bloom itself. And I'll show you how we're doing that with a line to give the impression, we're not cutting through this, we wanna give the impression that this is one long petal all the way to the center. So let me show you that real quick, how that looks, just so it's apparent to you. So do you see how we've pulled those lines down to where they come closer to center? So we're gonna, so we're gonna add those lines in there, just so this way it looks good. That way it looks like it originates in the center of our bloom as we want it to. Go all the way around on this thing. And that should look, that should start looking pretty darn good. Come in a little closer. The rivet's gonna cover up just a little bit of this, so it's okay if you get kinda close with it. If you see some lines not quite being where you want them to be, you can move them over just to fuzz, just by aiming your chisel that way to make sure it happens. So there we go. Now we've segregated out our petals, or at least given the impression of that, as you can see right there. Now I didn't mention this on the opening salvo of the video, but it'd be good to have a center punch mark now as well. So we'll go ahead and be using this if you're drilling them. I will be drilling this if you want to punch it with a quarter inch punch, you can do so. Uh, I find that it's harder to punch it and get reliable results than it is to drill it. So I will be drilling it. There you have it. 
So now all that's left is for us to actually form this while it's not connected to the hook. Uh, we won't be able to form it very well once we actually connect it to the hook afterwards without the rivet coming loose on us. So we want to go ahead and form this somewhat now, add a bit of a depression to the center of it, and give the leaves just a little bit of shape before we move on to assembly work. So that's what I will do in this next heat. Okay, so to sink the bottom of this bloom, I'm actually going to put it over the hardy hole of the anvil. I'm going to be using a ball peen hammer as a round bottom tool, and I'm going to be using a wooden mallet as my driving tool. So we're going to find the center of that. We're just going to drive that down. That's going to bring our pedals up for us, which is going to be good for us. Oh, it's about time for me to get a new one of these mallets anyhow. Yeehaw! You get to watch me destroy some. I need to make up a new one of these mallets anyhow, so that works out fine. We don't need that anymore anyhow. And there we go. Now we've gotten a little bit of height to where it projects off the wall a little bit for us. You can give these petals as much shape as you prefer. I am trying to keep this as simple as possible so it feels like anybody can do it. Um, without as many specialty tools as possible. But a rawhide mallet is really a nice tool to have uh, for artistic work like this, because you can hammer on the front of the pedal without it deforming all of your hard texture you put in there. There we go. Got a nice clean looking flower started. And again, none of this is a rule. You can make this exactly however you want this to be. This does not have to look like mine. It's your kit, you make it how you like. That's the great thing about these, is you can just take what I've done here, use as inspiration, and make it your own. All right, so now that bloom's done, let's see how it looks with the hook. The hook's done cooling down slowly. Let me make a mention of this real quick. When you are making this type stuff, you never know how much carbon content's actually in the piece here. So always let your stuff cool naturally. It's good to just put, a, put them off to the side. If you're making a bunch of these, just make it up and let it cool naturally by the edge of the fire or whatever um, in order to make sure that it's soft enough to drill. Because if you quench these off, you just dunk them in water real quick, it may have just enough carbon in it to harden. Uh, even though this is supposed to be mild steel, it's a large sheet that this gets cut from, so it could have varying properties. So now you guys can see how that's starting to come together. Okay, now for the fun and slightly challenging part. As you can see, I've gotten two holes drilled here for my mounting holes. In this case, I'm going to be using some black long drywall screws type deal as my mounting option. You can pick hand forged nails or whatever you like. But in this case, I drilled two 3 16 holes, like I said I would. One down about the stem of the flower, one up just above it there. Did that, and I went ahead and drilled the quarter inch hole all the way through for the bloom. On the back side, I went ahead and I went ahead and uh, countersunk the back side of the head in order for the rivet to have a place to fan out into when we put it together. And I also drilled out the bloom and already put the rivet through, just like so. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put that right on down, just like you see it there. And then this is how we're going to rivet it. This is the condition that I'm going to rivet it in. I'm actually going to make, you can do it however you like. You can turn this slightly cockeyed. You can put this where the pedal's in line and you've got two up top. You can line it like I'm going to. I'm going to split the difference in the bloom. Uh, that's really up to you, however you want to swivel this thing around. You will be able to turn it slightly after you get it riveted together, uh, just in case you don't like how you got it. So I'm actually going to use the tip of the horn of my anvil. Again, I'm trying to do this without all the specialty tools, so this way you can do it at home. Usually I would use something like this that's got a crown to it, so this way I could just lay it flat right down on that there and drive that home. Um, I've actually got a rivet bucking bar that would hold this rivet here uh, and various other things uh, to where I wouldn't have to do it on the horn. But I'm assuming you don't have all these little fancy specialty tools at home. So 
we're going to do it the good old fashioned way or the hard way or however. So what we're gonna do is we're going to aim to get just this rivet sitting on just this tip of this horn. And you might be asking yourself, is he about to do this cold? And yes, I am. Because that's all you need to do to set this rivet. It needs to be cold. You're gonna drive it down nice and snug like. See it there? And we're gonna keep driving it down until it fills, get it squared up where I want it, making sure that we're sitting just the rivet on the horn. We're gonna just keep driving that right on down until it fills out, until it fills out this backside depression without it sticking out. That's one of the biggest things there. We don't want this sticking out and impeding us from being able to screw it to the wall, right? So we want to make sure that that's sitting nice and flush. So I'll get back on here. Get it all nice and squared up. So now it's nice and flush. And there you have it. There's your finished hook just like so. So for finishes, you got several options you can do. You can brass brush this, which gives this a nice look, and then go ahead and uh, cool it and then clear coat it. That's probably the most, that's most likely the finish I'll do here. You can leave it natural and you could do a hot waxed finish. Uh, after doing some brass brushing or just leave it plain just like it is. You could wire wheel the bloom till it's really silver like and leave the stem all nice and blackened out and then go ahead and you know do various options just like that. But there you go. Uh, again, I leave it to you to do however you like. You can find these again over at our website blacksmithingblanks.com so be sure to go check out those out over there and pick them up if you are interested uh, in, in these. Again, this could be a very, very quick way of making uh, a nice ornamental project for a wife, a mother, um, or, you know, any, anybody else <laughs> that enjoys flowers. So that's it for today. Thank you to all the channel members and all of you great subscribers that make this content possible. Couldn't do it without you. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe and uh, let us know what you think down in the comment section down below. And as always, God bless each and every last one of you. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.